Hey friends, today I am building a rechargeable glue gun, a compact 12 volt model, and I want to show you what's inside, why the heating element uses nichrome wire, and how to handle that wire very carefully if you ever need to replace it. I'll walk you through what I'm looking at, what to watch out for, and why safety must come first. Let's get into it. As you can see here, the heating wire has now been replaced. The new wire is now in place, and all the other parts have been reassembled. I've carefully positioned the wire inside the nozzle, which is the heart of the glue gun, where all the heating and melting happens. We've now carefully installed the entire wire, making sure it's perfectly in place. Next, we're going to fit it into the glue gun's nozzle. We've securely fitted it into the nozzle, and as you can see, fit all the parts together. Let's imagine we are working on a project, say designing a battery management system product, with enclosure and all. Sounds simple, right? Until we have component delays, board fitting issues, thermal problems, or safety compliance. That's where Altium Develop saves the day. In this, we can capture all the requirements in one environment so everyone sees them. Then, its BOM portal helps to check the selected component availability, pricing, and lifecycle status. For traditional schematic and PCB design, Altium Designer is already there. But the Altium Develop helps with MCAD, ECAD code design for mechanical engineers to check the PCB fitting. When the design is done, we get a platform where team members review and give feedback on contexts like safety and pin maps, ETC. After review is done, Altium Develop generates release packages with up-to-date BOM and design documents. And it preserves version history so we know who approved what and when. Finally, Altium Develop saves all of the data like version history to evolve the product during production. Our life gets easier with Altium Develop. It is faster, safer and smarter. If you want to develop a full electronics product, you can check the link in the description to know more about it. So friends, we first mark the area with a marker and then carefully cut it using a saw for precision. We've finished cutting it and now it's time to fix the nozzle in place. Next, we need to connect an LED light and a resistor into the circuit as well. So far, we've connected all the wires and now it's time to join them securely using a soldering iron. There's also a switch included which we'll connect to the wires as well. You can see the process clearly in the video. We've now carefully connected all the wires, making sure each one is properly insulated using heat sleeves and secured in place. I even used a small gas lighter to gently heat the sleeves so they fit snugly over the wires for extra safety. Next, I go through the setup and complete any remaining soldering work, ensuring that all connections are strong, neat and reliable. This step is crucial to make sure the glue gun functions safely and efficiently efficiently every time it's used. For these two wires that you can see here, we need to attach a male socket by carefully soldering it in place. This will ensure a secure and reliable connection, allowing the wires to be easily connected or disconnected as needed. We need to use a bond tie to securely fasten together. By doing this, we can properly hold the socket in place on the glue gun, keeping everything neat, stable, and firmly positioned. This step ensures that the socket won't move or come loose during use, which is essential for both safety and reliable performance. After this, we install the other switch as well, securing it firmly in its designated position. Using a screwdriver, we made sure it was properly fixed so the glue gun can be safely turned on and off without any loose parts. Now we're connecting a 12 volt battery to the setup. When we turn the switch on, you can see the LED light glowing, indicating that the circuit is working perfectly. Next, we insert the glue stick into the gun and prepare Prepare it for testing. After making sure it's properly in place, we turn the switch on. Within just a few seconds, the glue gun heats up and as you can see, the melted glue flows out smoothly and consistently. This shows that our assembly and wiring were done correctly and the glue gun is now fully functional and ready for use. As you can see, the glue is coming out very smoothly and consistently, which shows that the glue gun is working perfectly. The reason it functions so well is that it runs on DC current, which provides stable power to the heating element. This allows the glue to melt evenly and flow precisely onto the surfaces, making it ideal for joining different materials. With this setup, you can create strong, clean bonds effortlessly, and it clearly demonstrates that our wiring and assembly were done correctly. You can also see the temperature clearly using the temperature meter, which helps us monitor how hot the glue gun is getting. So friends, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments. Let me know how you liked it and share any new ideas or suggestions you might have for future projects. Until then, goodbye, take care and see you in the next one.